What's up guys? Iceman here. So what you're about to witness are two of the most chilling bear attacks that I've told on this channel yet. But before I get into it, I'd like to thank you all for your support on this channel. And if you will, like the video and paw that bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And if you want to support me further, you can become a patron, linked in the description below. So let's get into these chilling tales. The bear latched onto Tia's thigh. She could feel the decaying yellow teeth sink deep into the muscles of her leg. Her close friend Aaron, startled by the scene, grabbed Tia by the arms in attempt to pull her from the creature's grasp. But her efforts were futile. Its death clamp began severing the flesh from her leg bone, warm blood spewing from the wound as she screamed in terror. The foggy night was anything but peaceful. A black bear attack was the last thing the two expected that evening along the Wolverine trails in British Columbia, Canada. The evening was full of laughs and gossip up until the very moment the hefty Bruin decided to make prey out of the two zesty young adults. It continued to pull Tia toward the brush, her leg now looking like a butchered chicken wing with flaps of flesh hanging off of it. Erin received a massive swipe along her face and neck, causing a gaping wound. It didn't stop her, however, from continuing her efforts of a game of tug of war with her friend against the monster. It was a deadly night. Darkness began to fall the moment the attack happened. It came from the brush. It came in a time of peace. Its soulless eyes were red like blood. It was hell. What's up guys? Iceman here. So this story is about two women, and two others even who were with them, who were ambushed by a freaking black bear. But I warn you, the details of this story are grim. But before I get into it, I'd like to thank you guys for all your support on this channel. And if you will, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit the bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And if you want to support me further, you can become a channel member or a patron. Links in the description below. So let's get into this chilling tale. In the area of British Columbia near Dawson Creek, it's not uncommon to see a variety of large wildlife, like moose, deer, elk, black bear, coyote, beaver, and red fox. Grizzly bears no longer reside in the lower Peace River Basin area, which encompasses the communities of Dawson Creek and Fort St. John, but they are numerous in other areas of the province. An estimated 120,000 to 160,000 black bears live in British Columbia, 25% of all Canada's black bears. Except for the most urban environments, black bears inhabit all areas of British Columbia. The westernmost province of Canada, British Columbia, is home to many unique color phases of the black bear, including cinnamon, brown, and blonde morphs. The north central coast is home to the famous white morph black bear, locally known as Kermode or spirit bear. A blue phase is occasionally spotted in the northernmost corner of the province. Black bears are most active in the fall as they enter hyperphagia, a phase of extreme eating in order to prepare for winter torpor. A recent study showed that with unlimited access to food and water, a bear would consume 15,000 to 20,000 calories in several gallons of water per day. In order to achieve this, bears may be active and foraging for 20 hours per day and greatly expand their ranges, looking for calorie-dense food sources. Tia was a beautiful young woman, a vibrant smile, love for the earth and the animals therein, and a peace about her that transcended understanding. She had no children and never went to college, but was close with her father, whom she lived with, and whom she missed dearly during the horrific attack. All the more reason as to why it was such a shame when the bear ripped her arm off and caused such a profusing injury to her leg that it nearly had to be amputated, with lifelong scars and ailments to show for the attack. 
The attack occurred at 7 p.m. on October 5, 2022, on a trail that is part of the Nordic ski trail system on Bear Mountain. The two women were meeting up for a nice hike, as they hadn't seen each other since high school. It had been 12 years. Erin had her two younglets with her, aged 10 and 13, the elder of which, her son Troy, helped fend off the menacing bear and made his way on his own to the Rustic Trail headquarters to notify authorities. The treacherous creature stalked them momentarily and charged the group of four as they made their way around the trailhead around dusk. It menacingly took down Tia and began dragging the fragile young woman away as if she were a freshly caught meal. What was expected to be a quiet evening, looking for nice spots to take fall pictures with the autumn leaves, ended up being a nightmare. The bear bull rushed the small group with its eyes on Tia's slender, pale white body. It rushed right through the two children and smashed into her and began ripping into her body. Her jean shorts were carved into her thighs from the vicious attack. She tried to fend off the beast while on the ground with her arms, but it wrapped its jaws around her wrist and broke it, hissing and snarling profusely. Troy, the older child, jumped onto the bear's back and began ripping at its neck and face tearing clusps of fur off with his hands. The bear turned on the young man, and with a single swipe, knocked him to the ground, dazed and bloodied. It turned back to Tia as she moaned in horror, grabbed her by the leg, and began dragging her into the darkness. Aaron, in a last-ditch effort, grabbed Tia by her bloodied arms and tried to steal her back from the persistent bear. Aaron kicked the animal in the face with her heavy hiking boots, but it lunged at her, letting go of Tia for a brief moment and mauled Aaron viciously. It took her to the ground and tore into her midsection, exposing some muscle and fat from the woman's abdomen region as it dug its five-inch claws into her flesh. She spun around onto her belly and tried to protect her neck with her hands, but the animal picked up on her defense and began biting at her hands and neck, breaking some of her fingers and digging a gaping wound into the back of her neck. The woman lay still and docile, and that's when the animal turned back to Tia and dragged her into the brush. It appears that the bear eventually took both women into a small cache that it dug into the ground, heaved their mangled bodies in it, and began urinating and defecating on them as a means of marking its new possession. During this time, Troy, knowing his efforts against the bear were useless, decided to seek help. He rushed down the trail to the visitor center and notified authorities, bringing his younger sister with him, who miraculously survived the incident. The teen was found with a laceration on his eye and cheek, nearly losing his sight from the bear while trying to protect his mother. The young girl had scrape marks on her knees from falling on their run back to the visitor center. It took park authorities nearly an hour to find the bear's cache, with the two women desperately clinging to life as their mangled bodies lay in ruin. In a two-foot pit in the ground, the bear dug for their souls to rest. Near the deathly sight, the bear was discovered, swatting dirt and huffing at the search party, even bluff charging them in the dark of night. The bear was shot and killed on sight, and the search and rescue volunteers from the town of South Peace helped transport the women, aged 30 and 48, out of the bush to paramedics. Tia with more severe injuries, was airlifted to a hospital in Edmonton. Aaron and her teenage son were taken to the local hospital in Dawson Creek. Jeez, what do you guys think about this incident? What's extremely startling to me is how this bear charged them even though they were all together. Two adults and two young children. In general, it is quite rare for a bear to even attack two people at one time let alone four. 
So it just really sets me up to want to be prepared for anything while traveling or hiking out in bear country. Although these two women were smaller in stature, nonetheless, the bear must have seen them and the situation as an opportunity. It disgusts me what they do with the bodies, how these women were still alive when it cached them away, not caring if they were hurt or okay or bloodied or still alive and it just decided to have its way with them and urinate all over them and whatever the hell it did. It's just so disturbing and I'd hate to ever find myself or a loved one in a similar situation. But what do you think could have been done differently for these women to avoid this encounter? Unfortunately, neither of them had pepper spray on their person. And if it weren't for the young child, these women would have most certainly been dead. It took the search party a little while to find them, according to the news article. And the bear was acting extremely aggressively before they were able to put it down. You could probably bet your tail it was going to eat one of the women that very night and save the second one for later. But nonetheless, comment below your thoughts on these matters. I'm very pleased that these women were able to make it out of there with their lives. And again, if you guys will like this video, subscribe to the page and stay tuned for more chilling tales from the Iceman. I see part of this grizzly bear just standing there huffing and puffing claimed Isabel's daughter, Leah, who was only five years old at the time the bear pulled her mom down from the tree and ruthlessly ravaged her body. I'm not dying today, Leah whispered to herself as she ran violently. I was just so scared, she said. I thought that was going to be it. What are the chances that this is going to happen to me too? I'm not dying today. I'm not dying today. What's up, guys? Iceman here. So what you guys just heard is the account of Leah, the daughter of a woman who died in 2005 by a grizzly bear. Leah almost met her mother's fate as well, years later, when she was only 17 years old. I did all the wrong things, she said. I was thinking, in some ways, that this was what my mom was thinking. I was thinking maybe I was weak. The bear wasn't even doing anything and I was running away and being frantic while my mom stood her ground and fought for her life. These are the words of Leah, who fortunately survived. And if only her mother had the same outcome several years previous. But first off, I'd like to thank you guys for all your support on this channel. And I'd like to welcome all my new subscribers. And if you will, like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the page and hit the bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And if you want to support me further, you can become a channel member or a patron. Links in the description below. So let's get into this chilling tale. Isabel and her friends loved jogging and keeping fit and active. At 35 years of age, Isabel was determined to maintain her youthful figure, even after giving birth to a daughter only five years ago. By all accounts, Isabel was living life on a continual high note. She had a happily devoted husband with whom she had just spent a week camping and hiking in the mountains. She was able to spend all the time necessary with her five-year-old daughter, Leah. Having quit her job as a fourth grade French immersion teacher, she had succeeded in climbing Mount Logan, Canada's highest mountain. Family, fitness, and friends, she had it all. She was a beautiful woman with her whole life ahead of her. All the more reason as to why it was such a shame when the grizzly bear ripped her small, helpless body to shreds near the Silver Tip Golf Course on that fateful day. Canmore, Alberta, is a stunning destination that offers an abundance of wildlife and wilderness experiences. The region is a nature lover's paradise, providing visitors with breathtaking views of majestic mountains, crystal clear lakes, and a diverse array of wildlife. One of the most popular activities in Canmore is wildlife watching. The region is home to a variety of wildlife, including bears, elk, bighorn sheep, 
and many more. Visitors can participate in guided tours and excursions that allow for safe observation of these magnificent creatures in their natural habitats. Watching these animals roam free in their natural habitat is an unforgettable experience. And Canmore provides ample opportunities to do so. Another popular activity in Canmore is hiking. The region surrounding Canmore is filled with some of the most stunning hiking trails in the world. Whether you're a seasoned hiker or a novice, there's a trail for you. The trails range in difficulty from easy walks to challenging multi-day treks, and they offer stunning views of the surrounding mountains and wilderness. Visitors can enjoy the beauty of the outdoors while getting exercise and fresh air. Canmore's crystal clear lakes and rivers offer the perfect setting for canoeing and kayaking adventures. Visitors can paddle through the pristine waters while taking in the scenic views and possibly spotting some of the wildlife along the way. But be cautious when watching the wildlife, because sometimes it watches back. Let's circle the golf course one more time. Isabel panted to her two girlfriends, who, although younger than her, were by no means more conditioned. It was a hot summer day in Canmore, Alberta, when the women decided to go on another morning run. Little did they know, a frantic grizzly bear had just been chased off the golf course they were circling, and it was destined to cross their path. The small group rounded a bend and saw the bear, about 20 to 25 meters ahead of them, on the same path. They stopped in their tracks and began backing away slowly. The bear turned to them and began trotting toward them with its head low and ears back. Isabel, without much thought, ran to a tree nearby that had low limbs and began desperately climbing it to get away from the concerning creature. Her friends kept backing away until the bear was no longer in view and immediately sprinted toward the almost half kilometer distance to the clubhouse at the Silvertip Golf Course. That's when it happened. They heard the screams. The screams of terror. But they kept running. The bear only had to climb to the first low limb of the tree in order to reach Isabel's bare leg. It started pawing at her foot like a cat, and she tried to kick it away and climb higher, but to no avail. With one final upward swipe, the bear latched onto her foot and pulled her toward it. She released her grasp from the tree as she plunged to the ground with the determined beast, and it began mauling her relentlessly, as though it were stressed from its previous negative encounters with humans. Laying on her belly, Isabel attempted to crawl away from the creature as it stood on top of her, digging into her back and neck. With ease, the bear flipped her over, exposing her vulnerable side, and it clenched its jaws around her neck as she tried to slap its paws away. Her screams could be heard throughout the golf course, begging for help, but help never came. And it was too late. The bear managed to break both of her arms and neck before Isabel bled to death on the scene. It clenched its jaws around her face as snot and saliva oozed down her neck. The foul decay engulfed her body. It was a gruesome, painful death that perhaps could have been prevented. A wildlife officer, accompanied by one of Isabel's jogging partners, returned to the site of the attack, where the officer killed the bear with a single shot. The mountains were her domain. She loved the snow, said Isabel's husband to the media after the vicious attack. She just settled into the mountains and thrived on it. Yes, there maybe should have been a couple more warning signs that the bear was in the area, said her husband, a native of Banff. Mother Nature does what it does. But one of Isabel's biking, skiing, and soccer parenting friends, Natalie Yarrow, says her death really is a consequence of bad decisions. The province of Alberta, she says, 
allocated land for development that should have been allocated for wildlife. Jeez, what do you guys think about this story? You know, after reading into these details a bit more thoroughly through various articles that I found online, it seems that the two friends Isabel was jogging with actually had the impression that the bear was stalking them as prey. One of the friends claimed that the bear came toward us like he was stalking us. What's even more concerning in my opinion is that this very same bear, who was a four-year-old male, was tranquilized a week previous to this incident and lifted by helicopter 15 kilometers away from the golf course. It was giving some people who were golfing problems. And in one incident, a young woman even had to shout at it in order to get it to back away from her. And a man grabbed a sprinkler on the ground turned it toward the bear to scare it off. After this incident, they actually tagged the bear with a GPS device so that they were able to locate it if needed. But it's crazy to me how they didn't even take it that far away from the golf course. Because of course, as we see in this story, it made its way back without much of an issue. So it's crazy how this bear had a sort of track record in terms of encounters with other humans. And that on its own, to my understanding, can almost encourage the bear to begin seeing humans as potential prey. It was said that the bear was protecting the body of Isabel, or her corpse rather, after the kill. Similarly to how a bear would protect its prey. After all my research in bears, that's one thing you really have to look out for when it comes to black bears, brown bears, and grizzly bears. Is if you smell like a rotting corpse while you're walking down a trail in bear country, a bear very well could be protecting it. So if you get too close, the bear is likely to charge at you, thinking you want to take the corpse or whatever. But yeah, what a shame that this young woman had to die. To me, it's just a further reminder to not take a single day for granted, and in my opinion, to always go out prepared. I think it's easy to excuse yourself in some moments from being prepared. Like if you're going on a jog or whatever, you don't really want to have to carry your hand cannon or even some pepper spray or a pocket knife, so you just leave it in the car. But unfortunately, that very well could be the day when you need it. What's interesting is, at the beginning of this video, the daughter of Isabel, Leah, explained that on that day, many years after the Isabel incident, when she was going for a jog, she actually decided to keep her bear spray in the car. And that's the day when a bear approached her. But fortunately for Leah, she was able to get away without being harmed. And to my understanding, she made a mental note that day to never go out unprepared again. But what do you guys think could have been done differently in this situation? It's really too bad that she ended up climbing the tree because of course, that's kind of breaking a rule that you don't want to break, where you never leave the group you're with while being approached by a bear. Because of course, her two friends kept just backing away from it and eventually ran back to the golf course headquarters, leaving Isabel alone up that tree. It really seems like that her life could have been saved if she would have just stayed with her friends. But in these situations, you only have moments to react. So it really can be hard to know at the time what the best move to make is. The bear must have really been determined to climb that damn tree after her. And it's important to note that grizzly bears are certainly capable of climbing trees as well. Granted, they seldom do it. Whereas black bears climb trees all the time. But still, it should be noted, you really can't escape any of these things by climbing trees. And I would really only use it as a last resort. But anyway, I appreciate you guys for watching this video. Once again, if you will, like the video, subscribe to the page, and stay tuned for more Chilling Tales from the Iceman.